Well, hello everyone. I'm Christian Gonzalez. I'm a senior cloud engineer here at Open Nebula. Today, uh, I'm going to review with you the different options that we have when you want to deploy an open source private cloud with Open Nebula. And also, we will uh, have a, a demo for reviewing the, the newly added HCI cluster, which would allow you to automatically uh, deploy this HCI cluster in your on premise infrastructure. First of all, I'd like to start by reviewing uh, at the highest level the Open Nebula architecture. So on every Open Nebula uh, deployment, we will have uh, at least a front-end node. In this front-end node is where the Open Nebula service run, and it only needs to run on this front-end node, not on the hypervisor nodes. And then this front-end node will be able to manage a different setup of infrastructure, of virtualization infrastructure. Today, we are going to focus on the on-premise infrastructure. So I'd like to start uh, by going a bit deeper on this front-end node concept and explain a little bit more of what the front-end node is for Open Nebula and what services usually run on this node and these kind of things. So the first service and the most important one, which will run in the front-end node always, is the Open Nebula, uh, the Open Nebula service. Uh, we call it 1D. And this service takes care of uh, managing everything which Open Nebula manages, like authentication, storage, virtualization, all these drivers which take care of doing these different things will be executed by this Open Nebula service. And also, uh, the service takes care of uh, monitoring the resources. So, uh, all the monitoring information will be gathered by this service and will be stored and updated in it. Uh, also, on top of the Open Nebula services, there are uh, a few other services which provide like higher level uh, services or abstraction. Which these are the, the services that you can see here in green. So they, they usually run in the same um, physical host, but they could run in, in a different one. So the most typical one are the VM scheduler. These services take care of give monitoring the Open Nebula. Uh, VMs and whenever a new VMs a new VM appear in pending state, this uh, service will um, deploy the VM in a specific node uh, according with the rules and the configuration of the service. Also, uh, typically the Sunstone web uh, interface run in this node too. Sunstone is basically our main web interface for managing uh, Open Nebula resources, and also we provide uh, another set of um, services which usually uh, run in the same node, but again, you can deploy them in a different one. Also, the front-end um, node can be deployed in different ways. The most simple one is the standalone. You just deploy one front-end node. This is a very simple scenario. The problem is when you need more uh, liability. If this uh, front-end falls down for whatever reason, you will lose uh, the access to manage, it, to manage your, your VMs. So if you need more reliability, you can deploy uh, your front-end in a high availability manner, and this will uh, allow you to ensure the availability of the of the front-end. And also, when you have like different uh, data center at different zones that you want to manage them independently, you can uh, federate this front-end. So you will have like different Open Nebula instance which will share the the user like information so all your users will be able to to log in with the same credential in, in all of the instances and and you can also share some resources like private marketplaces you can create your own marketplaces and make them available in all of your federated zones and this kind of stuff now that we have reviewed the front end node uh, i like to do the same with the hypervisor node what is a hypervisor node for open nebula uh, which services run in there and how you can configure them. Mm, basically, the hypervisor node just needs to run an uh, operative system. Uh, we support the main Linux distribution. And, and on top of that, we just need uh, to install a hypervisor, which will be installed by Open Nebula packages. Typically, the, the most used one is this Kimu plus KVM hypervisor. And also, Open Nebula will automatically uh, start a monitoring agent there, which will take care of sending the monitoring information back to the front end node when the uh, hypervisor node is added to to the Open Nebula cluster. Uh, 
uh, apart from these uh, free services or whatever we want to call it, we'll need to use uh, or make available some storage and networking resources in these nodes so the VM can use them for just uh, run itself and, and going outside uh, by networking. So we will Open Nebula will just use uh, whatever is in the hypervisor, you will need to configure Open Nebula accordingly for using the exact resources that you want. Uh, and how, how we can configure Open Nebula is another important topic. Um, one of the ways of configuring Open Nebula for using or for properly using your hypervisor resources is um, by doing it manually, like this custom deployment where you will uh, manually prepare your hypervisor. Once they are ready, you will properly configure Open Nebula manually and tell which resources they can use from this hypervisor. This uh, task, depending on the scenario, might, might be more or less complex and it might need uh, some people with enough knowledge uh, to, to know how to configure them. And that's why we created this one provision tool, which will allow you to uh, automate this process if your scenario fit one of the current uh, supported ones. So at the moment, we have this edge cluster scenario, which uh, will allow you to automatic, automatically configure uh, your infrastructure using the one store um, storage drivers and VXLAN networking. So you just need to pass the IP address to this tool and the tool will automatically connect to the nodes and automatically configure using these drivers. Also, lately we have added in, in our latest release, we have added this uh, option for deploying HCI edge cluster, which were basically the same. You will be able to pass uh, the address of some nodes and this one provision tool will automatically connect to the nodes and um, automatically configure the storage uh, and, and the virtualization stuff. Um, for storage, we will use uh, theft drivers and for networking, uh, also we will use VXLAN. So now we can uh, review like the different options of storage that we have when we do this custom deployment and networking and, and this kind of stuff. So we are going to start with the, the storage uh, solution that we are currently supporting. And we are going to review like some important high level features that they support or not. Uh, we can start by this NFS or NAS uh, solution. Basically this driver will allow you to use any POSIX compliant file system, uh, solid file system uh, for Open Nebula. And this will allow you to perform disk snapshots, VM snapshots, live migration, and you will also have fault tolerance it basically means that your VM can be deployed in a high availability manner. So in case one of the one of the hypervisor where the VM where, where VMs are running fell down as the storage is started among, among multiple multiple of them, uh, Open Nebula will be able to automatically redeploy the VMs in a new hypervisor using the, the started storage. The next driver that we have is the SSH driver, which basically will uh, move things around using SSH protocol and it will use the local storage of your hypervisors. So it's, it will allow you also live migration and snapshotting, but it won't uh, support this fault tolerance as, uh, as the, storage, the storage is not shared. So if one host uh, fell down, all the storage within it will be loosed with it. So this feature is not supported. Then we have one store, which is kind of an improved um, SSH uh, storage. It has all the SSH uh, feature. It will use the, the local storage of your hypervisor, but it adds uh, some uh, extra feature on top of it. It has some caching, so um, image uh, transfer is uh, reduces and the speed of the deployment process is improved. Also, it kind of support fault tolerance, but not in the same way that the started uh, storage like work. Uh, it will periodically create some snapshots and you will be able to recover for one for, from the latest of these snapshots. In, in, if the host uh, where the VMs are running fell down, you will be able to use these snapshots which are uh, stored in a different place.
for recovering the VM, but you might lose uh, some information that the snapshots are taken periodically. You are not using like the same uh, storage uh, that was uh, used uh, the VM before the server crash, like for the satellite file system. Also, we have uh, the theft um, driver, which support all of the feature, but the VM snapshots. Also for, for the SAN solution, um, this will basically allow you to, to use any storage uh, cabin or any fewer channel storage uh, and make it available for, for deploying VM in it. We will use a LVM underlying. So at the moment we don't support a snapshotting, but we do, we do support live migration and fault tolerance. Uh, the e, the iSCSI uh, driver will allow you to make an iSCSI storage available for a VM directly. So, well, it doesn't support a snapshotting because you are using the, the exact uh, iSCSI uh, storage and we are mounting it or making it available directly for the VM. It does support, support live migration and fault tolerance as long as other hypervisors have access to this um, iSCSI module so the VM can be redeployed and, and provide the access to, to the storage. And also we have this uh, RDM uh, module, which is raw device mapping, which will allow you to um, uh, make available uh, any physical block device from, from the hypervisor into the VM. So, it doesn't support any snapshotting or line migration or fault tolerance because you are using an existing disk on that hypervisor. So if the hypervisor fell down, uh, you won't be able to, to access it from a different host. So that's like the high level image of how the different storage uh, solution and how they work, all of them are open source. Then the next step that probably we need to take uh, in Chacon when we are deploying our private uh, Cloud is the networking. In OpenEula, we support uh, two different uh, options for implementing the networking. Those are Linux Bridges and OpenB Switch. Here we can see like the different uh, options that this solution provides. All of them will allow you to deploy plain network with no firewall or with uh, no isolation when, 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 when the VMs are just plugged into these uh, virtual switches and, 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 and just that. If you need another uh, layer of uh, isolation, both of them also support uh, uh, VLAN and VXLAN. So you can configure uh, your environment for, for isolate and, and open Nebula to isolate the traffic of different virtual network in this uh, VLAN or VXLAN uh, using these VLAN or VXLAN protocols. And also Linux Bridge that support security groups, which is how you can deploy or define firewall rules for Open Nebula VMs, but OpenB Switch uh, doesn't support it at the moment. So, well, this is also an important thing to take into account when you want to use one or another technology. The next thing that probably you want to take into account is the authentication. How your user, when you are in a multi-tenant environment, how your user are going to authenticate themselves against Open Nebula for managing their resources. So, we provide for uh, support for for different action for different methods the most typical one uh, is the built-in uh, authentication basically open Nebula, when you create a user will assert the user and the password and you will be able to create some authentication token for within open Nebula, and the user will just uh, log in using these credentials for the ssh method the user will be just uh, authenticated by a public ssh key uh, public and private SSH keys, so uh, it will allow you to, to authenticate yourself with these keepers. Uh, also, you can uh, integrate Open Nebula with your LDAP or Active Directory and make the users available in, in these services also available in Open Nebula. They will be mapped into Open Nebula users automatically, so every time a user which is available in these uh, services log log it into Open Nebula. Uh, if the user exists in these services, Open Nebula will automatically map it, map it uh, the user in, into Open Nebula and he will be able to, to use the service uh, as a normal user as it, he was using the, the building uh, authentication. And also, um, 
an oil option, which is less common, is this X509 uh, certificate that you can also use for authenticate your user, which it's required a little bit more complex scenario because the user needs to provide these certificates, but it's also an option. And now uh, I will also review, I would like also to review with you like the different integration uh, with third party tools that we have at the moment. Um, currently we have this uh, Open Nebula provider for Terraform, which is officially uh, supported and yeah, it can be found in the official Terraform registry. We have also support for Ansible modules, which will allow you to use Ansible for deploying Open Nebula resources. And also we are uh, officially integrated with Kubernetes. So using Open Nebula, you will be able to automatically deploy your uh, Kubernetes cluster within Open Nebula. Also, you need to integrate Open Nebula with any other system, with uh, any custom system that you have. We provide uh, API bindings for, for of the common uh, programming languages. We have bindings for Java, Ruby, Python, and Go which will allow you to interact with Open Nebula uh, and integrate it with any other third-party system. So now that we have reviewed like the different options that you had when you are deploying a private cloud using open source technologies and Open Nebula, uh, I'd like to, to start a, a demo for showing you how you can uh, automate the deployment of an HCI cluster using this one provision tool on Open Nebula. Here we have like um, a view from the eagle side of the, the demo that we are going to do today. We have a front end node here, which uh, is where all the heavy lifting is going to be done. And from this front end node, we are going to configure these five hypervisor nodes uh, with the storage, uh, with the Ceph storage and the hypervisor technology. So uh, we will be able to automatically, once it is finished, we will be able to, to use them for deploying VM using the, the storage available at these nodes. Uh, in this demo, we are going to use three different networks, one public uh, network, which will be available at ETH0, and you can see there in red. We will have another private network, which will be available at ETH1 on every node. And then we have the storage networking, which will be available on ETH2. And also we have uh, a pool of public IP addresses uh, starting with that one and with size five. So we have five uh, public IPs that we will be able to use um, once our cluster is configured so we can access the, the VMs from outside. So uh, let's start with the demo. Okay, so here we have five terminals, each of them connected to each of the nodes that we are going to configure. Uh, they are numbered here from one uh, to five. And well, I will run all the commands uh, at the same time in the five terminals so we can check the, the spec of the servers. So let's start by checking the networking. We can see that all of them have a free network interface. As I mentioned before, this ATH0 for public networking, the ATH1 for private networking, and the ETH2 for storage networking. So now we can check the the storage uh, configuration in the node, we can see that it's the same for all of them. And all of them have this SDB uh, disk available with 20, with 20 gigabytes each, which is the one that we are going to use for configuring the theft cluster, right? So now the first, the next thing that we need to do is uh, to go use to this one provision interface and, and start uh, configuring our nodes. Here we have like the, the dashboard of the one provision tool it will show you like the different resources that we have. Now it is empty because our front end doesn't have any resources. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a provider. And we are going to, to create a new provider for this on-premise infrastructure. So here we need to select Metal and on-prem here. We're going to select the on-prem provider. We can put some name and some description here. And then we don't need to fill anything else because basically it's, it's like a very simple provider for, for this. And now that we have the provider, the next thing that we need to do is to create the provision, which will automatically manage, uh, we will automatically configure the, the resources. So we came here to the provision tab and yes, the same with provider, we create a new provision. We select meta and on-prem 
And now here we select the on-prem HCI cluster because we want to configure it that way. The on-prem provider is automatically selected now. And here we can put some name and some description to the cluster as we are going to uh, configure the Madrid infrastructure. We set that in the name so we can later identify it properly. And here we need to provide the information for, for it. So first of all, we need to set the host to run the hypervisor OSD and dev daemon. So we are going to put here uh, three of the five nodes that we have. Let, let me type the, the IP addresses here. Okay, so after it, the, the next thing is to set the, the hypervisor, the, the host where the hypervisor and OSD daemons are going to run. And we are going to use another one of the host here. Let me put the IP address. And then we need to select the host to run hypervisor and theft client. No OSD daemon in this one, so the storage of this one won't be used for the theft cluster. Let me put the IP address here. Then we need to select the type of virtualization that we want to use, which is going to be KVM. Then uh, we need to set the first public IP uh, of the public IP pool that we have here. So this will create a new virtual network with this information that we can use later for the VMs. So I'm going to put the first uh, IP address of the pool here. Then we need to uh, define the size of the pool, which was five. And then we need to define the interface for the public networking, which was ETH zero. After that, we will need to define the device for the private networking, which was ETH one, and for the storage, which was ETH two. And then we just need to define the, the theft storage uh, network that we want to use. And, and the last step will be to define the, the disk that we want to use for the theft cluster, which we are going to use this SDB, as we said previously. So we just click in the next button and uh, it will start automatically configuring everything. And when it finishes, uh, our cluster will be ready. So let's wait for it to finish. Okay, now it has finished. We can check how many time it have taken. It has, let me go up. So it started at 1450 and it finishes at 14.56. So it took in a total of like six minutes or for configure the five nodes. So now we can take a look at the provision that we have just created. If we, we can see it here and if we click in, uh, we will see like all the information available. We can also see like this is in green. So everything is properly configured. We can see here some information you can check also the data store that have been created, one for images and one for system. We can see here also the public network. Uh, also, we can see the hosts which have been added into Open Nebula. And also, if we need it for anything, we have the log information here, uh, which was generated while the while the cluster was uh, configured. So now we can go to Sandstone interface, which is like the main Open Nebula management console and check the sources are there too. If we refresh here, we will see like the vnet number have been increases, which is the only resources that appear here. And also we have, can see that five monitor hosts. We go to the host section, we can see that all of them are monitor. We can see the capacity there for all of the hosts and they are all ready to use. At the moment they have uh, zero running VMs, all of them. so. Uh, that will change. Also, we can check the virtual networking. We can see the public uh, network there and the size. Uh, we are using zero out of five that we have at the moment. And also, a uh, network template has been created, which will allow us to create this private network. So we can instantiate this template as many times as we want, and we will create uh, private network instances. So we are going to uh, create a new one. We are going to call it a Madrid HCI cluster private. And we need to add an address range for this network. So you can put here the range, whatever range that you want, because uh, it will be a private uh, network. So it shouldn't interfere with any other things. So once we have set the address range, we can instantiate the virtual network template and 
it will create a new virtual network, which is now ready to use for our VMs. And we can just uh, make as many as we want. So now we can check also the data store. They are available here. Uh, we can check also the theft cluster storage. We can see the disk and that all of them have been configured uh, to be used by theft. But the one note that we didn't install the OSD, which is the five uh, one, you can see it's different there. Also, we can run some theft command to check the, the cluster. We can check the available uh, storage here running this DF command. We can see that we have 80 gigabytes. Uh, as we have configured four of the five nodes with this OSD server, so we have uh, 20 gigabytes at each node, and we have four nodes, so we have a total of uh, 80 gigabytes available for for our cluster for our storage cluster. Also, we can check like the the OSD tree. We can see the different nodes which are using uh, uh, the storage for this theft cluster, and also. Uh, we can check the, the status of the cluster. We can see the health, the number of nodes, and this kind of stat. We can see all of that here. Also, you can see that some commands are failing in this node because we didn't install the theft client in this one. So when it's trying to uh, to use it, it will fail. But it is normal as we didn't install the client in that one. So um, now that we can in the, in install a new application, and start deploying VMs as we have checked that our cluster is healthy and everything is ready. We are going to deploy, to download this Alpine image and we are going to start deploying VMs in our new cluster. So once the image is downloaded, we need to wait for it to be ready, which is this now. So next thing is to update the virtual machine template to put some custom attributes here. First of all, we are going to add uh, one of uh, Nick interface network interface for each of the network that we have created so we can properly check them. And we are going to put a password for our root user so we can access the VM through VNC. So now that we have our virtual machine template ready, we are going to instantiate a VM from it, a couple of VM from it, so we can check the networking. So we'll ensure that we are putting a two here and then we just create two VMs. Now the VMs are impending, waiting for them to be deployed. So we need to wait for them to be in ready state. Let's wait for a couple of seconds. Okay, one is in running now, and the other one, you can see here the IP addresses. This one have the 0.1 and the 51, and the other have the 0.52 and the 0.2. So we can access to one of them via VNC using the password that we have set previously. And now we can see that the networking is configured. We have two network interface there, uh, each of them with uh, the IP addresses which are used. We can ping among the VMs, the, the two different VMs using the two networks, like it, it worked for the 10 network. Let, let's check this 172. It is working too, so networking is properly configured now, and we uh, can connect VMs. Uh, using private and public network. And now we can check the public network by accessing directly the VM from my laptop. So I'm going to SSH into the VM from my laptop. And well, we can see that it works. It works. We can check the networking, for example, here all looks the same. And well, that, that's all. The, the VM is uh, now deployed and the networking work for all of them. So as a summary, we have deployed an HCI cluster using this on-premise infrastructure. It have created these two data stores, one for images and one for system, which uh, are used for the VMs. We have also a public network, which was automatically created. And we have created a private one using the virtual network template, which was generated as the result. Also here, we can see the host. Uh, we can see that two of them are full capacity as they are small and we have one VM deployed in each of the in each of the host and well that that should be all i'd like to also thanks to the sponsor for making this event possible uh, also remember you that you can uh, give a try to our latest uh, release uh, open 64 which is available for downloading now 
And also, well, thank you everyone for coming, for listening here today. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the talk.